One of my friends uh, is a puppet maker, so we had him make something for you that uh, we have here. Please don't look like me. Yeah, it does look like <laughs> me, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Thank you, puppet maker friend. Put him over like that there. I'm sitting in an escape room in a castle, about to play a game of Dungeons and Dragons with John Darnielle of the Mountain Goats. I broke free on a Saturday morning. I put the pedal to the floor. It's loosely based around his new album, In League with Dragons. Let's play. Well, this is a righteous campaign. <laughs> Basically, I grew up as like a Warhammer kid. You no um, kidding. I yeah. never met one. Yeah, I had got the set for like a birthday when I think it was twelve. So he's a Warhammer guy. What do you do? I play D and D. All right. My character already has a name. Yeah. Okay. You can change it if you like. But you've already statted me up. Yeah. Ah, that's, yeah, that's the most fun part. Is it? <laughs> that is the most fun part actually for me. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Do you want to get started? We'll walk us through. For sure. And we begin on Sky Lane. One path leads to a tavern, the other a cave. The wizard is hunched over his chair by a raging fireplace. He is the vibe of an athlete past his prime and black bandages over each eye. The wizard puffs of a cigarette and then beckons in the direction of your party. There's like 90 Mountain Goats references in that last <laughs> paragraph. So the wizard is beckoning us over, you said? He's beckoning you Cool. Over. And how big's our party? It's just me and you? Yeah. Okay. And tell me about your character. I don't know anything about him. He's a half-orc, very headset on just bashing things and going headstrong into any battle he gets. You are a Warhammer dude. Yeah. <laughs> Before we head in further, can we talk about the new record a bit? Sure. Okay, but um, first we have to talk about how this the blade of this guy's scythe is as long as his body. He's also got a skeleton face, so I assume he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. So the record started out as a rock opera? Yeah, I had an idea just to do this kind of thing. A seaside community called River's End, which is governed by a wizard whose powers are declining. That was the interesting one to me, is what's underneath a story about a charismatic leader whose magic is waning. Right. At one level, that's a fantasy story. At another level, it's a way of thinking about your own life. I think if you are writing a story with an aging wizard, my question for you is like, who are you in relation to the aging wizard? Right. I think most authors of aging wizards are themselves relating to the aging wizard. I don't think, if you're Tolkien, I don't think you can question it all. He would love to be Aragorn, but he is Gandalf. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. I, myself, am Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Will you enter the cave and slay the dragon? Will you make it real, make a deal? You um, knew it was coming. There was no I way know. we weren't going to do it. This is what we signed up for. You exit the tavern, pass rows of white cedars, and walk towards the cave. At the entrance of the cave is a figure in a cloak, a riddle. He faces Graham and asks, what is a good dream? Every dream's a good dream if you're doing it right. <laughs> Every dream's a good dream, even awful dreams are good dreams. If you're doing it right. So what's the appeal of playing for you? Like, what do you like about it? Left to my own devices, I will isolate. And so it's good. I've made friends with, you know, the people I play with. It's a weekly time where I can see people I like. There's a real shape to it where we sit down, we eat, catch up on what's going on, and then we play for an hour and a half, and, uh, and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's cool. I mean, you grew up uh, kind of loving fantasy and yes. had a bunch of that stuff. Is it strange to see how ubiquitous this has kind of become within culture in terms of, like, Dungeons & Dragons yeah. becoming more popular? Like, what fandom cultures have sort of become and what the assumptions those cultures either have about themselves or the narratives they try and build. I'm, I'm speaking specifically to that group of online dudes who consider themselves like the real comics fans. Mm -hmm. When I was a young comics reader in the 70s, that was not the vibe anybody had at all. <laughs> it's like that was, so I don't know where that came from. As you proceed deeper into the cave, you come out on the other side to a large throne made of skulls yes. and a, with a red dragon nested around it. I'm going to cast Minor Illusion for Dragon Song. Okay. So for something from Dragonkin culture, a song they would know. All right. Yeah. But it, the dragon continues to scream, where is this song coming from? Who invokes my tongue? It's me, Davkin, and I am the one controlling the dragon song. How do you know this song? I know all the songs. What is your name? I am Tlok Tlok. Tlok Tlok, it's my understanding that you've, you've taken a shield from a, a comrade of mine. We'd like to have it back. He thinks for a minute, what do I get in return? Again? It's, do you uh, want to play him some songs? Well, no, I want to, don't want to join. <laughs> I want to serve the dragon. <laughs> serve the dragon. <laughs> I, I mean, time. I don't have 
I don't even know anything about myself. For all I know, I have nothing going on. For all, for all I know, I was hanging around that bar because it's the only thing I have to do. I, well, you are haunted by something. I'm haunted by the need to serve great power. How about this? I will serve you. I'll return to the cave when the moon's full to sing. And, uh, and it'll be a practice space, basically. Bring the whole band. <laughs> You're so into the storytelling aspect of this. It's weird. When I think of D and I always think of people just going through and slaying. Well, and... this is the thing. So yeah, no, like I say, I've never played Warhammer, and our table, we are much more interested in the storytelling and the mechanics between players and who you're going to be, and you're expressing something, and you're doing a sort of therapy on yourself. You're learning stuff about yourself. But we are mainly about how characters behave under pressure. Right. And uh, and improvising scenes, but yeah, I do think I mean everything I tell is a story in some sense. I mean, I think Joan Didion has this line: "We tell ourselves stories in order to live," and that's true. Anything you're doing, you fit some kind of crude story around. I mean, I think it's how we think of things is stories. When when I ask about you about a relationship you had that ended, you will tell me the story. Mm -hmm. Right? That's it, you won't say, "Well, no one can really say what happened." <laughs> it's like you have a version of what happened, right? And. Uh, and everybody has versions of stuff, and I think that really is how we come to understand the world, is through stories. John, thanks so much for taking the time to do My this, pleasure. man. I really appreciate it. This has been a real blast for me. I feel bad, though, if the proper DM is like, so they're not going to fight. All right. <laughs> <laughs>